my presentation. Uh, in the following, I would like to briefly describe uh, host microbiome interactions and their modeling possibilities from several from several aspects. Uh, usually, the microbiota and the host organism live in a symbiotic relationship, which uh, broadly means uh, a long-term association of two or more organisms. Uh, this association can be either harmful or beneficial to either part partner, but we generally prefer to call beneficial microbes uh, symbiotes. Harmful microbes are less likely to form long-term relationships with their host and are called pathogens or parasites. Uh, symbiosis uh, range from dependence of the host on a single microbial species to dependence on a complex microbiome of many species. And uh, the symbiotes uh, can provide many, bene many benefits to the host, including food supply, protection against pathogens and predators, and uh, they can increase the tolerance uh, to environmental stress and uh, can have the immune system maturation as well. Although beneficial symbiosis increase the host fitness, uh, they are uh, not without uh, cost. Uh, the host also provides the symbiote uh, nutrient supply protection from other pathogens or predators and, uh, and the stable uh, environment for them. Uh, the symbiosis occurs in each generation when the microbial symbionts colonize their hosts. Uh, in some systems, uh, the primary way of acquiring the symbiont is through horizontal transfer from the environment. Uh, to establish horizontally spreading symbiosis, uh, the hosts must select uh, beneficial symbionts from a potentially large number of microorganisms. Uh, the horizontal transfer is the dominant transmission mode for vertebrate hosts, uh, which often have large and diverse microbiomes. It is also because vertebrates uh, must manage the colonization and reproduction of large communities of microbes, by limiting entry and preventing the proliferation of harmful or unnecessary microbes. In other systems, such as invertebrates, the symbionts are often transmitted vertically from parents, usually the mother, or uh, to the offspring. Uh, vertical transfer results in relatively fewer symbionts being passed uh, directly from hosts to, the, uh, to their off offspring allowing for tight, tighter exp exposure control to the symbiont by the offspring. Parents can facilitate the transfer of symbionts in many ways, for example, by coating the surface of the eggs with microbial symbionts, or in the case of kudzu bugs shown in this picture, by placing the microbes in a closed capsule uh, next to the hatching offspring, which uh, uh, it consumes immediate, immediately after hatching. In both modes of transmission, once the symbiosis is established, the host must control the symbiote population by preventing overreproduction and overexploitation of host resources. Uh, whether we are talking about surface bound, plant associated, or within host systems, uh, disruption of the symbiosis has detrimental effects on the health of the host organism, uh, leading to different diseases. In the human context, uh, gastrointestinal disorders like inflammatory bowel disease and some metabolic disorders like diabetes have been shown to be caused by an imbalance between the body and the microbiome. To understand the, the symbiosis, we need to know the different gut microbiome members and how they communicate with each other and the host. Uh, this communication occurs uh, through the product, uh, production of metabolites, so it is essential to identify which microbes are present and their metabolic output. However, uh, this still doesn't fully elucidate uh, the dynamic interactions between the host and the microbiome, as the metabolic output of microorganisms depends uh, on their environment. Uh, this fact leads to the individual difference, to individual differences making successful treatment of these disorders quite difficult. As I mentioned in my previous presentation, experimental approaches 
uh, although crucial, uh, cannot fully capture the mechanisms, interactions, and function due to the enormous complexity of the gut uh, environment. Uh, in a vegan host system, genome scale metabolic models help better understand the uh, relationship between the host and its microbes. Uh, in this approach, we can visualize bacterial interactions as a metabolic network by placing the set of the metabolic reactions of a single bacterium in a compartment in the metabolic network. Uh, we can uh, isolate the metabolic reactions of one microbe from those uh, of another microbe or even the host cells. By placing each cell compartment in a shared compartment, we can simulate how different uh, cells interact metabolically with each other. This is the compartmentalization approach mentioned uh, uh, I mentioned in the previous lecture. Uh, once we have the metabolic networks of each bacterium, bacteria and have uh, managed to link them somehow, we can immediately apply the constant base methods, methods the FBO and, and the, its extensions appropriate to the purpose of the study. The figure shows a simulation of metabolic interaction between two bacteria. Of course, we can do this with several uh, bacteria as well. Uh, a bacterial metabolic compartment is located in a compartment that is connected to, to a metabolic co uh, compartment representing a host cell. The host cell compartment is connected to another compartment representing the host plus stream. Uh, arrows between the different compartments uh, indicate exchange reactions. Uh, solid arrows indicate the influx of metabolites into the system. Uh, and then the dashed arrows represent the outflow of metabolites from the system, representing metabolites uh, excreted in phases or translocated into bloodstream. Uh, so far, uh, these are only two cells. If the goal is to study host microbiome interactions, we can introduce a compartment representing a host cell and link it uh, to a joint metabolic compartment representing the good lumen. Using uh, this approach, uh, uh, Haken and her contributors have combined the metabolic compartments of bacteria the state Toyota Omicron and the generalized most cell into a metabolic network. They investigated their metabolic dependencies by simultaneously optimizing the growth rate of the host cell and the microbe. It was one of the first uh, analyses uh, of the co-metabolism between the host cell and the coexisting microbe. In this study, uh, the growth of mice and bacteria was modeled simultaneously on five different diets. And uh, with this integrated model, they were able to capture mutually beneficial cross-feeding as well as competitive interactions. Uh, they also identified metabolites uh, exchanged between the two organisms, which they compared with published metabolomics data. They also demonstrated in silico that uh, the presence of uh, that bacteria can rescue the growth phenotype of the host organism from an otherwise lethal enzyme but pathology and vice versa. This system's uh, approach provides a powerful tool for modeling metabolic interactions between the microbiota and the host in terms of health and disease. Although this metabolic network only shows the interaction between one bacterium and one host cell type, which doesn't accurately represent the gut, my, uh, gut community, by expanding the network to include more bacteria and host cells compartments, we can gain uh, <clears throat> deeper insights into the systemic effects on microbiome on the host. This allows predicting the impact uh, of the gut microbiome uh, on the host and suggesting possible interventions to promote host health. To fully capture the impact of the microbial community on the host, the metabolic networks of the gut community need to be linked to genome scale models of uh, other host cells. Many such models are already available for human different human tissues, such as the liver, the blood vessels, and um, intestinal epithelial cells, to extend the existing metabolic networks of the gut microbiota to human cells. 
Uh, uh, one of the most representative model of human metabolism is the RECON 3D. It is an extensive database of more than 13,000 metabolic reactions, which can be used to integrate host and microbial metabolism, among many other things. Uh, combining host and bacterial metabolic models can be challenging due to spatial organization organization. Um, for example, the gut is spatially organized with gut cells surrounding the microbiota. Uh, accordingly, the gut microbiota metabolites are most concentrated in the lumen and will be available first to the microbiota rather than to the host cells. Uh, when we simulate the interactions between the gut microbiota and the host, metabolic networks should consider these uh, gradients. Uh, similarly, metabolic and pH gradients exist along the intestinal tract uh, with the composition of the microbiota in the small intestine differing from that in the colon. Uh, in addition, bacterial cells migrate from the upper part of the gut to the largest intestine and to be, intestine, uh, to be finally eliminated in the faces. Uh, one way to simulate these gradients and spatial organization is to insert empty compartments between host cells and bacterial compartments. Uh, the compartments are organized into a two-dimensional grid where each bacterium has its own box uh, from which it can exchange nutrients. The compartments are linked by exchange reactions, allowing the bacteria to interact with each other. A new bacterium can fill the empty compartment, uh, which can simulate bacterial movement or reprodu reproduction. Uh, the empty compartments also simulate gradients, as not all of the nutrients can uh, that enter them reach the next compartment full of bacteria. This process uh, was, mo was modeled uh, in the Becarina environment, mentioned, mentioned uh, by me and by uh, Gail Gay as well. The figure shows the schematic overview of this. The microbial species are shown in different colors and the, the unidirectional rows indicate the flow of exchange reactions, while the bidirectional rows indicate movement and uh, reproduction. Another problem of combining bacterial and host metabolic models is formulating the appropriate objective function. Uh, in most metabolic networks, either total biomass growth or metabolic output is optimized. In the gut, uh, the host benefits most from a balance in the metabolic production of all bacteria, which requires a balance between the distribution of different microbial species. The already mentioned uh, OPTCOM, a two-level optimization approach can be used to sol solve this problem. Uh, each microbe grows uh, at a specific growth rate, and the opt-command casino toolboxes uh, take this into account, but not the steady state of the community. Uh, therefore, the optimization of biomass production results in the dominance of the fastest growing bacteria in the system, which uh, leads to a flux distribution that is not representative of the flux distribution of the gut community. Uh, and uh, to overcome this problem, uh, the Steadicom tool was developed uh, to consider the community's steady state. Uh, to accurately represent the re reality, the results uh, of simu uh, simulations of metabolic networks need to be experimentally validated. In addition, uh, after the initial model has been built, uh, Additional, uh, for example, omics data, data can be integrated to better fit the model to the physiologically relevant context. Uh, we can use uh, metagenomic profiling to provide data on the growth rate of community members. Uh, this figure shows a schematic overview of a compartmentalized uh, host microbial model. And uh, we can integrate different data types into the model to simulate personalized microbiomes, not fruition or gene expression data detected in body fluids. 
the colors uh, illustrate the parts of the model uh, that can be put into context with the different data types. Uh, while uh, the metagenomics, uh, while metagenomics uh, provides information about the microbes present in a community, communities with similar composition can still differ significantly in which functions are active. Uh, metatranscriptomic and metaproteomic data characterize the RNA and proteins that shape community metabolism. Both data sets uh, provide evidence for which metabolic for which metabolic pathways are active in the community and uh, can therefore be used as re reaction weights. Uh, and the metabol metabolomics uh, can provide helpful information on the shared metabolite pool and the exchanges uh, that take place in the microbial community. We can tailor constraints of exchange reactions to these data to reproduce metabolic availability, production, and consumption. Uh, in addition, the measured secreted metabolites indicate uh, which pathway, pathways uh, are active, and they also can therefore be integrated in the, into the model as reaction base. In the following, I would like to move beyond the field of, of metabolic modeling and continue with the description of host associated microbiome communities from the community ecology perspective. It is clear from the above that animals and the plants are host to microbial communities that promote their health and fitness. And uh, these host associated uh, communities are usually very diverse and distinct from microbial uh, communities in the external environment. In addition, uh, the composition of the microbiome can vary considerably between individuals of the same spe species or genotype and also within individuals at different ages and, and uh, life stages. The processes uh, that determine the composition of uh, these communities are still uh, poorly understood, but it is necessary to consider both deterministic and stochastic processes at multiple scales. I would now like to review the processes within the individual host and between communities that arise from several hosts. The focus will be on uh, uh, host associated communities colonized by microorganisms from the external environment, including horizontally spreading microbes uh, with a free living phase as well. Uh, initially, mainly descriptive uh, host associated microbiome research focused on characterizing microbial communities composition and the diversity. Uh, such work has shed light on some factors that influence this uh, composition over a wide range of scales, but there are also significant uh, limitations to this approach. Firstly, uh, it relies on taxonomic rather than functional measures of diversity and composition, even though the latter are selected for or adapted to by the host. Uh, the phenol and the phylogenetic correspondence between the microbial taxonomy and uh, the trait composition is far from perfect. On the other hand, uh, several microbial taxa may be functionally redundant, performing the same role. Uh, and this also hinders a clear correspondence between composition and function. Uh, as a pathway to identify the common traits of microbial communities in multiple hosts, many studies have characterized the, the so-called core microbiome, which comprises microbial taxa that occur in high abundance in a host population or species. Uh, however, it would be a mistake to focus solely on the core microbial taxa or functions uh, as a variable component of the microbiota may represent the majority of taxa in some host. Uh, several rare or transient taxa have been reported that uh, have a disproportionately uh, large effect relative to their abundance, or that is present beyond the presence in the host. In contrast, uh, some abundant taxa interact little with the host or other microbiome members. 
from an ecological point of view, we can consider the microbial community within an individual host as a local community colonized from a regional species pool, earning uh, all the microbes that the host en encounters in uh, its environment. Det uh, deterministic environmental factors can have a controlling influence on the composition of the regional species pool. For example, uh, the regular species composition of the rhizosphere of a desert plant differs significantly from that of a temperate plant. Or the regional species composition of the gut microbiome of many animals is strongly influenced by the host diets. Some hosts are modifying their regional species pools to include increased populations of compatible taxa. Uh, in animals, uh, this often manifests as social or other behaviors uh, and may involve the shedding of living uh, microorganisms into the outside environment. At the same time, plant roots release photosynthetic carbon compounds uh, and other substances that recruit uh, rhizobia and other beneficial microbes. Uh, in the regional species pool, many microbes cannot colonize a host because uh, their requirements are incompatible uh, with the host conditions and resources. For example, some microorganisms uh, are intolerant of pH conditions in the animal gut or are exclu excluded by the host uh, susceptibility to antimicrobial defenses or anatomical barriers to colonization. But these traits also drive deterministic processes, essentially mediating differences between microbial communities in the host organism and the external environment. Uh, the micro-microbe interactions within the host associated community can also influence the subset of the regional species pool uh, that colonizes the host uh, or changes in the microbiome's composition. These interactions are complex and diverse, but also generally deterministic. Uh, some interactions are competitive, parasitic or, uh, or predatory, while others are mutualistic and different types of interactions may occur simultaneously. These pairwise interactions are likely to be influenced by interactions with a third species, other higher order interactions between microbes and uh, by the interactions with the host. With the host. Uh, for studying the patterns of host-associated communities, uh, the co-occurrence network analysis offers a very valuable method. Uh, it is a topological uh, approach. Uh, several processes may contribute to co-occurrence, including shared habitat requirements and cooperative and uh, indirect interactions. For example, the figure shows an analysis, uh, example analysis of a wild oat rhizosphere community. It has a much more connected and complex network structure than the surrounding bulk soil communities with, predominant, with uh, predominantly positive co-occurrence co patterns. We can use uh, these network approaches also to detect uh, key taxa whose impact on the community is indirectly manifested through their role in the network. The microbiome communities as, uh, associated with each host are not isolated, but linked to transmission between hosts. Therefore, the regional species pool that makes up a host associated community includes microbes of individuals belonging to other hosts, even other host species and pre-living populations as well. Together, uh, these communities form a meta community, uh, which is uh, a set of local communities linked by the dispersal of potentially interacting species. It is important that the composition of local communities is influenced by the processes that operate at, operate, uh, at the level of the entire meta community. Meta community. Uh, these processes uh, include dispersa between local communities and ecological drift, uh, drift as well. The random uh, changes in the relative abundance of species. Many of these processes are stochastic, although the evolved properties uh, of hosts that uh, facilitate transfer between hosts can make dispersal events at least 
partially deterministic. The significant contribution of stochastic processes to de developing inter-host variation in microbial communities contrasts with the processes within individual hosts, which are predominantly deterministic. It is Mm, increasing, it is clear that the taxonomic and functional composition of host associated microbiome is influenced by processes operating at the level of host populations and that the level of control over the composition of the host microbiome varies greatly. Uh, the host species derive many benefits from their microbial communities, such as protection from enemies. Uh, the antibiotic producing microbiomes are one of the most abundant uh, groups of beneficial microbiomes in nature. The following, uh, I would like to give an example of the increasingly accepted fact that host assemble, assemble non-random microbial symbiosis and that beneficial symbionts occur in these assemblages with the uh, with a higher frequency than, than random bounds. In other words, uh, hosts can select suitable microbial partners, uh, sometimes uh, even a single species. For example, uh, we can consider the ethyne ants, which uh, live in mutualistic symbiosis with a vertically spreading fungus. And uh, the ants uh, keep the fungus in a warm and moist environment and feed it plant material such as leaves and the fungus in turn digests the plant material to feed the ant colony. The ants also harbor and feed on a cuticular microbiome which in turn provides antibiotics that the ants use to kill pathogenic fungi and bacteria that invade the fungal colonies. Uh, and the there are two possible explanations for how, for how this system works. The first is that uh, only the pseudocardia uh, bacteria are true mutualists. Uh, they evolved and co-diversified with ethyne ions by vertical transmission and are rarely recruited through, uh, through uh, ant lineages or from the environment. And but uh, this interpretation raises the problem of uh, how the efficacy of antibiotics could have persisted over millions of years, given the persistent presence of uh, generalist and speci specialist fungal pathogens such as the um, Escoopsis. Uh, the other explanation is that uh, the ants uh, constantly recruit a wide, wide variety of and uh, acting bacteria from the soil, uh, which maintains their effectiveness through the simultaneous use of antibiotics with different modes of action. Uh, in fact, it is known that the attic ants cuticle microbiome contains many actinobacteria species and that uh, they can produce active antibacterial and antifungal agents. Uh, the mutualistic presence of several bacteria raises uh, two further problems. Uh, first, uh, how does the ant selectivity ingest uh, beneficial bacteria from the vast pool of bacteria in the soil? And uh, how can this diversity be maintained uh, in, the, in the microbiome if we are in competition for the ant, ant niche? The concept of screening uh, was introduced to model the uh, co-evolution of the host and the microbiome. Uh, so, supposing that the host can couple its reward to symbionts with a demanding, so-called demanding environment, uh, such that uh, the combination is uh, attractive to mutualists and unattractive to parasites. In that case, uh, selective recruitment of mutualists will occur even if the host cannot discriminate between symbionts. Uh, the host doesn't even need to know the symbiont's quality. And uh, if the host evolves uh, to adjust the living foundations appropriately, the potential symbionts will evolve to accept or reject the host according to the type of them. Uh, and the aim here was to identify the conditions under which host can successfully screen in antibiotic-producing bacteria 
And uh, to identify the conditions for assembly, we uh, they use competition-based screening in which the demanding environment arises from competition between symbionts. Uh, suppose the host can stimulate competition such that beneficial symbionts have a competitive advantage. In that case, the symbionts will evolve to screen out or screen in depending on their type, or the unhelpful symbionts will simply be excluded from the competition. Uh, here is the model. Uh, it contains four variables, the substrate, the beneficial microbes, the antibiotics, and the pathogenic microbes. Uh, the beneficials and the pathogens can represent individual bacterial species or bacterial fun functional groups. And the terms are used to distinguish antibiotic producers from non-producers. Uh, Therefore, uh, pathogens are parasites in the sense that they consume the host resources, but don't provide any benefit and thus impose opportunity cost on the host. Uh, the beneficials must always be resistant uh, to their own antibiotics. Um, otherwise, antibi uh, otherwise uh, the antibiotic production would be suicidal. And they are typically resistant uh, to many antibiotics they don't produce themselves. So uh, only beneficials can directly harm pathogens. You can see uh, the, uh, the parameters of the model, uh, e, e, the immigration rates, rates of pathogens and beneficials, the maximum per capita growth rate of pathogens and so on. Uh, alpha is the proportion of substrate uh, taken up by beneficials and diverted from growth to antibiotic production. K is the half saturation constraint used in the mono equation to limit the growth of the beneficial as a function of nutrient concentration. And uh, delta is the decay or mortality rate. And uh, uh, suppose we assume that the mortality rate is the same for all four equations and that the total amount of substrate has reached a steady state. Uh, and in that case, antibiotics and beneficials are produced at a constant rate, allowing uh, to substitute A for B. And this way, we can introduce uh, new parameters, simplifying the uh, system into two dimensions. Um, for simplicity, we also assume that the immigration rates are zero and uh, and the conservation of mass uh, S equals to one minus B minus P. And by investigating the null clients, uh, we can perform the qualitative analysis of the system. Uh, we can examine these null clients uh, as a function of the host resource level the proportion of host resources devoted to antibiotic production by beneficials and the bacterial growth rate. Uh, in the first case, uh, if the growth rate of beneficials is higher, pathogens are comp competitively excluded, even in the absence of antibiotic production, regardless of the amount of resources of the host. Uh, it can occur if the host provides a substrate, pr substrate primarily available to beneficials or simply due to a random difference in, in growth rates. In the second case, uh, we assume uh, more realistically that the growth rate of beneficials is lower, lower than that of some pathogens and uh, then beneficials can never invade a population dominating these faster growing pathogens. And uh, as the beneficials devote increasing amounts of host resources to antibiotic production, uh, priority effects begin to emerge in the community, uh, meaning uh, uh, by stability, by stability or alternative st steady states. And uh, neither the pathogen nor the beneficial can invade the population already dominated by the other. Instead, uh, there are two stable equilibrium states, uh, the complete dominance of the beneficial or the pathogen. The equilibrium state depends on which bacterial type has the higher initial abundance. Uh, therefore, the dominance of beneficial bacteria requires both antibiotic production 
per capita and sufficiently high initial population density, which produce uh, sufficient antibiotics to control pathogens. Uh, and now we can add the competition based based uh, screening by the host. Uh, although the antibiotic production can provide competitive superiority, it is quite costly. And one option, therefore, is for the host to evolve to provide resources superior to the soil to, flu to fuel antibiotic production by beneficiaries. Uh, to see this effect of increasing host provided uh, resources on the dynamics, we let again beneficial growth uh, rate be less than pathogen growth rate. And uh, suppose there are no beneficials in the microbiome, uh, uh, in that case, the null plane of the pathogen is above the null plane of the beneficial. And uh, the beneficial cannot invade the po uh, population of pathogens. But uh, if the beneficials are present, increasing host resource provision steepens the null plane, the null plane uh, for the pathogen, eventually causing the system to become stable. Uh, and the beneficial domains of attraction increases strongly with the host resource provision, but only weakly uh, with the proportion of resources diverted to antibiotic production um, and with uh, antibiotic effectiveness. Uh, finally, we can add competition-based screening uh, by the host. Uh, uh, also, antibiotic uh, production can provide competitive superiority, uh, sorry. Um, and uh, in some systems, we can assume that vertical transmission of beneficials doesn't occur, such as with platries of spheres. Uh, however, it's still possible to achieve higher uh, initial frequency of beneficials if they have a higher immigration rate from the environment. Uh, and uh, for modeling this effect, uh, we assume that the uh, initial density of microbes is zero in the host, and uh, assume that there are non-zero immigration ra rates. Um, as the initial transient state determines the behavior of the system, we study the original model, uh, not the simplified one. Uh, as the figure shows, uh, if the system is stable because of high subset production and effective antibiotic defense, it evolves to the beneficial dominated state if the immigration rate of beneficials is high compared with the immigration uh, rate of pathogens. And this means that uh, the vertical transmission is not required to achieve a beneficial dominated state. And uh, the effect of bistability is that, that uh, uh, it is possible for a host to screen in a microbe dominated, uh, by, bene dominated by beneficials, even if host provided resources can be consumed by all bacterial types, and even if pathogens have higher intrinsic growth rates. And uh, this process can have uh, three steps. The first is when the new host microbiome starts with a higher proportion of beneficials, which can be achieved via vertical transmission or via a higher immigration rate of beneficials, uh, due to, for instance, uh, spatial aggregation of previously successful hosts or banning environments. The second is that uh, the host, uh, host provides a high resource level which fuels intense interference competition via antibiotic production and results in competitive dominance by beneficials. Uh, ultimately, uh, we conclude that uh, competition-based screening can describe the evolutionary ecology of the ethic cuticular microbiome. And uh, it can be explained the high diversity of the ant cuticular microbiome by adding a fourth step to the scenar this scenario uh, once the beneficial microbiome is established, uh, other actinomycete uh, species in the soil environment, typically resistant to wide range of antibiotics, uh, should be able to invade and coexist, either neutrally through permanent immigration or stabilized food niche partitioning uh, above the host. 
uh, as a result, it is not surprising uh, if we see signs of both vertical and horizontal transmission in actinobacterial mic microbiomes. Uh, this model suggests that the uh, vertical transmission of one bacterial family, the pseudocardia, may facilitate the horizontal transmission of other bacterial families uh, by placing the system in a region of the face place, uh, space where the immigrant pathogens cannot survive, but the beneficials can. Uh, that means that uh, the most important role of pseudocardia may actually to be established dense colonies on the abdominal surface of some uh, ant workers. So it can achieve continuous vertical transmissions by facilitating the inoculation of new queens. Uh, screening for additional bacterial species uh, solves the problem of explaining long-term antibiotic efficacy, efficacy in the ant system. Uh, the diverse and constantly changing community of actinometrators uh, allows for a so-called multi-drug strategy. So uh, in the previous minutes, I flashed some snap snapshot of the many different modeling possibilities for host microbiome systems. We can capture the subject as a vast uh, range of scales uh, and approaches from genome scale models to meta-community modeling. And uh, by using very different tools, depending on the, on the aim and the scope of the investigated system. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>